Hello and welcome to the first video in this series of tutorials presented by Neometrics Technologies. In these tutorials, we will be showing you some of the basics of using the 3D modeling software GeoMagic Design X. For this first exercise, we will be solid modeling a computer mouse from mesh that was collected um, from 3D scanning. And the primary objectives are going to be learning how to use mesh sketch, extrude, and mesh fit surface. You can follow along if you like. The STL files are available and there is a free trial available for Geomagic Design X. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and import the mesh um, STL file. There's two ways of doing this. You can come up to the import button up at the top or through menu, insert, and then import. So the mesh that we're going to be using for this one is going to be our mouse aligned. And go ahead and import that. Now, in, in later videos, we will show you more on how to align and how to clean up um, the mesh so you can begin modeling. Uh, but for this one, it's already kind of done for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide those reference planes for now. And um, we're going to start off with by creating regions for the, for the software to kind of estimate the different regions based on curvature. So come up to the regions tab over here, over to auto segment. And clicking on that, we're going to see that um, we want the sensitivity for this one to be about 65 and the mesh roughness to be about a third smooth. So go ahead and click accept to begin that process. And it's going to take just about 30 seconds or, so, or less to create that. And this is what we have. And you can see all the different regions. You can just hover over some of them so it, it'll show you that we can select those as separate entities. So now that we have that, we're going to come over to the model tab. What we want to do is to create a plane on the bottom surface of the mouse so we can begin sketching. So in the re uh, reference geometry section, we're going to go ahead and select plane and just go ahead and hover over and click select the bottom of that mouse. I'm going to hit the preview button over here to kind of take a look at what this is going to look like before you go ahead and click, click accept. Looks pretty good. So go ahead and click yes. And then from there, we, we can actually begin sketching. So we're going to come over to the Sketch tab. And from our drop-down menu, we're going to choose Mesh Sketch to begin it. And since we just created that reference that reference plane, it's going to be automatically selected as our base plane. But you can change that, of course. So we'll just go ahead and reset that and select it again, just so you can kind of see how that goes. And so we're going to do an offset distance from the base plane at 3 millimeters for this model. And as you can see, it does move away from the mesh. We don't want that, so we're going to go ahead and just flip the direction using the um, arrows over here off to the side. So clicking Accept for our mesh ske sketch setup. And now I'm just going to go ahead and hide the mesh. There's actually two ways of doing it. You can hide the mesh by itself or the regions um, by themselves as well. So some of the hot keys for that are going to be Control-1 for the mesh and regions. So I'll go ahead and turn that back on. And then Control and 2 to turn off the regions tab. So I'll just go ahead and hide that for now. And so to begin, we're going to start off with um, creating some horizontal and vertical arcs. And we're going to do that by going into the Draw section and from the drop-down menu, clicking Center Point Arc. And to create these arcs, we're just going to double-click on um, the area up at the top, the polyline. Create another horizontal type <laughs> arc down at the bottom as well. One on the back side and one on the front. Now there's two separate um, polylines over here, so I'm just going to click one and then double click on the other to create one sketch, one, um, one arc. Now that that's okay, I'm going to come over here and click OK. And I want to go ahead and um, fix these so they don't move around. So I'll just do a box select on the top and bottom arcs, right clicking and hitting the anchor arrow to fix those. Same thing with the vertical, you can do them all at once of course. Um, right clicking again and add fix constraint. So now that those are fixed, we're going to go ahead and fill in these holes that we have off to the sides uh, using the tangent arc. Um, now the thing about tangent arc is that it will create tangency where you begin your arc, but not where you end your arc. So we'll see that in just a second. So create one, and then I'll create another. Now as you can see, there's tangency created at the first and second node, but not at the third node. 
connecting it to that third arc. So let me just go ahead and finish making those really quickly and I'll show you how we can fix that. And one more. And I'll go ahead and click accept. So to go ahead and add it in the tangency, there's two ways to do that as well. You can click on one of the arcs, hold down the shift key, and click on the other arc, right click, that'll open up your tangency um, constraint right here up at the very top. Now there are a lot more a lot more constraints that are available to you that might not be um, in the select um, few that they do um, that show up when you do the right click. So you can also click on the first arc and hold down the shift key again, double click on the other arc that you want to make a tangent, and it'll open up a few other options. So we'll just go ahead and click tangent here as well and accept that. One thing really quickly I do want to do is I want to um, delete this fixed constraint just for a second so I can kind of uh, actually. Oh, no need. <laughs> so you can actually go ahead and drag and drop. It's going to keep the same radius, but it's not going to let you um, move it around too much. Just extend the line of that radius. And we're going to close these front parts using a fillet. So up here in the tools section, we'll use the fillet and we'll click on the um, first arc and the second arc to go ahead and close that off. And do the same with a second, and we can go ahead and adjust those once we're done. So just simply dragging and moving it over to fit that pink poly line. It's as simple as that. And I want to go ahead and check the accuracy um, of this, this model. We're going to do that using Accuracy Analyzer. So coming down to the bottom, right-clicking, enabling the Accuracy Analyzer, we're going to see the deviation um, from the body, and I'm going to set the value to be about five. Let's see what that looks like. So it kind of shows you where our um, our sketch deviates from the polyline that was draw, um, gathered from the mesh. Um, and I can also see if there's disjoint ends in the in the model. If there were, they would show up light green. We'll say, I'll show you that a little bit later if we need to. And um, to turn that back off again, you can just hit none and unpin it. So now that we have a pretty good sketch, I'll go ahead and exit and we'll come over to the model tab and we'll do an extrude for that sketch. I'm going to turn the mesh back on so we can pull it up past past the top of the mouse and we're going to actually cut the surface away so I'll just drag it up quite a bit past the mouse since we will be cutting it away so you have a little bit more room to work with and go ahead and click accept. Now, I'll automatically chose to extrude from that sketch because we just created it. If you wanted to extrude from a sketch that you didn't just create, you can always come over to the tree and from the drop down menu, um, just collect what, uh, select whichever mesh you'd like, uh, sketch that you'd like to extrude. Okay, so I'll go ahead and turn that off for right now. The next thing that we're going to want to do is um, from our regions create a mesh fit um, surface using the wizard up here. So staying in the modeling tab, we're going to come over to mesh fit. Um, go ahead and click on that and create um, a surface from these two. So I'll just select the top regions, not this button indentation that, that we'll do in the next step. And don't worry about changing any of these options over here as well. And let's click to the next stage so we can take a look at what it looks like. So that's going to be our surface that it's going to create and it looks good, so I'll go ahead and click accept on that as well. Awesome, so let's go ahead and use that surface that we just created to cut away the solid body we made earlier. So in the edit section, we'll go to cut, and for tool entities, I'll go ahead and select the surface right here. For target bodies, we'll select the solid that I want to cut and go ahead to the next stage. And we're going to select which which body we'd like to keep. So let's go ahead and click the bottom section and click accept for that as well. OK, so I'll turn off the surface body, turn that back on. And this is what we have so far. And what we're going to do next is actually do the same step, but just for the um, finger indentation as well. So I'll go ahead and hide that solid body for right now. And then I'll come over, do the mesh fit again, and select this region. Okay. Let's see what that looks like.
awesome. It looks like it's going to create a pretty good cut. That'll work really well. So let's go ahead and cut that as well. And target body. Okay. Going on to the next stage. We'll keep this section and get rid of the other part. We can turn off that other surface. So this is what we have so far. The last thing that we're going to be doing is creating a fillet along this edge right here. Um, so coming up to fillet, um, we'll just go ahead and select that edge by just clicking on it. And letting the computer do the work, we're going to hit the magic wand and have it estimate the radius from the mesh. Okay, so it's saying it's about 28. And it'll give you kind of a preview of what it will look like. And it looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click accept for that as well. Okay, and so there we go. We have the basics of this model done. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and continue. Um, one last thing before we're done, I'll go ahead and see what the deviation is like um, between the two, um, between the mesh and the solid body and see how they look. And it's going to kind of just create a little color map. So the green areas are pretty good. Like I said, you can continue working on this model a little bit and cleaning up some of the edges and um, filleting some of the, the um, sides over here as well. So if you'd like to continue, you can, and please stick with, with us for the next uh, video. We're going to be solid modeling a valve connector. Thanks.